Did you know that tightness in your neck can cause shoulder pain, mid back pain, jaw pain, tension headaches, grip issues, shooting pain down your arms, numbness and tingling in your hands, brain fog, poor eyesight, and many more issues besides these. Now, you probably know if your neck is tight. Maybe it feels stiff, achy, or sore a lot. And of course, neck tightness can cause neck pain too. But before you go releasing your neck fascia, before you start massaging your neck or stretching it out in yoga, it's worth asking, why is your neck so gosh darn tight in the first place? And the answer might surprise you. The thing is, if you don't address this at the root level, then your neck tightness and all of these aches and pains will just keep coming back. So in this video, you're gonna learn how fascial tightness in your neck can cause all of these issues, the relationship between your neck muscles and your core, specifically your lower abdominals, and what to do to reverse all of this for good. Hi, my name is Alicia Celeste, and this channel is all about empowering you to find the root cause of your pain and trauma so you can start thriving. We talk about the scientific and spiritual aspects of owning a body, a mind, and a soul, and one of my favorite things to nerd out on is the mind-body connection and how to consciously evolve into freer and freer versions of ourselves, no longer bound by our survival patterns. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. And whether you're new or not, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So that helps us both beat the algorithm and ensure that you see new videos when I post them. All right, before we go any further, I have a few questions for you. Have you ever fallen hard onto your tailbone or your hip? Have you ever had abdominal surgery? Have you been told that you're in anterior pelvic tilt? Is your low back excessively curved? In other words, are you in sway back or lower doses posture? Have you ever had low back surgery? Do you have a history of sexual trauma? Were you ever paddled or belted as a child on your butt? And finally, do you sit a lot? If you answered yes to one or more of these, then chances are your neck tightness is actually stemming from your lower abdominal muscles, important deep core muscles that are not activating. I'm talking about your pelvic floor, psoas, and transverse abdominus muscles specifically. Now, I'm going to explain why this is in a moment, but first, all of this is very personal to me. I can say yes to four of the eight questions I just asked you, including a lot of sexual trauma when I was a teenager and falling really hard on my tailbone when I was 17. Throughout my late teens and 20s though, I didn't have any upper body pain. I had knee pain that kept me from running and hiking for years, but I had no idea the perfect storm that was brewing in my upper body. In 2011, I moved from South Carolina to Boulder, Colorado, and it was there that I healed my knees using kinetics, my method of stepping on people to release fascia and rewire the nervous system. And then I began hiking and trail running again. And I also started working out with a few different fitness trainers, one of whom got me into Olympic lifting. At the same time, I was now stepping on people full time for a living, which meant I was looking straight down at the floor all day. Now, if you are looking straight down at your phone all day, maybe even right now, stop it, stop it. <laughs> I mean, okay, do whatever you want, but just know that it could be putting you in the same painful boat I was in. See, back in 2012, I injured my left shoulder during an Olympic lifting session. And back then I was stubborn and I was still in a trauma pattern of typically enduring pain. So I ignored my shoulder and kept doing yoga climbing mountains, and working out, which is when my body started screaming at me. So my mid-back pain started hurting so bad, I couldn't even take a deep breath in without knife-like stabbing pain uh, behind my heart, basically, in my ribs. Finally, my body had my full attention. So I did try to get help. I went to massage therapists, fascia release practitioners, chiropractors, doctors, and even a couple somatic psychotherapists because I was totally open to the fact that unhealed trauma could be playing a role. Nothing helped. Some of these things made the pain worse, but the most frustrating part for me was not getting any answers about why this pain was happening. 
I'm sure you can probably relate. This is the hardest part for us. And it wasn't until I went to one chiropractor that did some muscle activation testing that I got any answers at all. He told me that my neck was so tight that I didn't have any grip strength because the nerve communication pathway between my neck and my hands was blocked. But since the body is amazing at compensating, I could still grip things. The pain though was my body's way of saying, I can't keep doing this. You gotta fix the real problem. Now he also told me that my left gluteus medius wasn't activating, which is a story for another video, but a million light bulbs started going off for me and I thought I had my answers. So I had my favorite massage therapists and fascia release people get into my neck to release the fascia there, right? It seemed like the answer. Meanwhile, I tried to go back to yoga and my three times a week gym workouts, but no matter how much I focused on releasing my neck, that mid back pain didn't budge. And it actually took me eight years to solve this mystery for good. At the same time, I kept thinking if I could just find the right personal trainer, they could figure out my muscle weaknesses, my imbalances and get me figured out and back to good, right? But every trainer I worked with told me the same thing. You have a serious case of anterior pelvic tilt. So we are going to focus on strengthening your core, particularly your lower abdominals. And every time they did this, I noticed myself turning into the Hulk. My neck muscles would bulge out. The veins were popping. I turned bright red in the neck and face. And I felt like I was seriously straining my cervical spine or my neck. Then in the fall of 2019, while I was sitting in a hot springs in New Mexico, it hit me. And I asked myself a question that helped me solve this mystery for good. Is it possible that I have scar tissue and tightness in my lower back, tailbone, and sacral ligaments from that fall onto my tailbone when I was 17? And if so, is that tightness inhibiting my lower abdominal muscles? I immediately called my favorite massage therapist to figure out if this theory was true. And she got into my low back tissue, my sacral ligaments, my tailbone. And as soon as I got off the table that day, my lower abdominals could actually activate my ribs were no longer flared out like they usually were, and I wasn't in as bad of an anterior pelvic tilt. Now, I wasn't fixed, but I had my answers. And this is the moral of this story. Neck muscles will compensate for lack of deep core and lower abdominal activation. If the lower abdominals are inhibited, it means they can't contract, which means you can't strengthen them. So any core work you do will only lead to compensations and eventually pain like I was in for so long. So where you feel pain will be an area of vulnerability unique to your daily habits, prior injury history, and the activities that you engage in the most. Now I'm going to get a little sciencey on you here, but hang with me because I want your body to make sense to you. The lower abdominals are really important stabilizers of the lumbar, spine, and sacrum. Basically, your low back where it meets your pelvis. And without access to these muscles, the spine is vulnerable to injury during any activity requiring spinal stability. In the absence of lower abdominal activation, your body will compensate by stabilizing the other end, your cervical spine. In plain English, this means your spine needs a stable base in order to move well with you. Now the pelvis is supposed to be that stable base and your pelvis includes both hips, your pubic bone, your tailbone, and all of the muscles in that area. When the pelvis can't be that stable base because of inhibited muscles like your lower abdominals, your neck and its muscles have to become that stable base for your spine. And the primary reason that lower abdominal muscles become inhibited is due to scar tissue or tightness in the low back, tailbone, or sacrum area. When those tissues are dense, short, and unable to expand with flexibility, you cannot contract your lower abdominals because in order to do so, those low back and sacrum tissues need to be able to stretch. Okay, I'm going to interrupt my own video here to let you know I don't have any sponsors on this channel. So this video is sponsored by me and my online course called Solving Pelvic Instability or SPI for short. 
This is the course that I wish I'd had back in 2012 because it would have saved me so much money, so much time, and so much pain. I wish someone had told me back then why glutes stop firing, why lower abdominals become inhibited, why neck tightness is caused by a lack of lower abdominal activation, and why strengthening the glutes and the core is the worst possible idea if you haven't addressed the root cause of why they're inhibited. This course helps you solve head to toe pain at a root level, from plantar fasciitis to knee pain, low back and hip pain, mid back pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, tension headaches, and many more. Back in 2012, I was able to figure out why glutes stopped firing, and I noticed that this seemed to be an epidemic among my private practice and online clients, and it was happening in me too. And while I was able to help myself and those clients solve pain related to glute inhibition, primarily things like plantar fasciitis, knee pain, hip and low back pain, I was missing a really important piece of the puzzle when it comes to hip and pelvic instability. And when I finally looked into the relationship between the lower abdominals and the low back and sacrum, all the puzzle pieces came together. Enrollment is currently open for the 2021 session of SPI, at least when this video is going live, and the course includes five live Zoom Q&A calls with me. We're gonna start together on July 26th, and the final call to join us will be July 28th when doors close. I'd love to welcome you into my online course community where it's a lot easier for me to help you get results that last than I can ever do here in one-off YouTube videos. You're gonna have access to all of my resources for solving pain, including an extensive library of fascia release techniques, guidance on how to find and address those root causes, when and how to activate those glute muscles or your lower abdominals, and we're also gonna talk about the nervous system and mind-body connection. So I'll leave a link in the description and the comments below where you can learn more and enroll. So obviously neck tightness can cause mid back and shoulder pain as was the case with me. The mid back and shoulder pain were the result of losing grip strength due to neck tightness for me. But since I was doing yoga, working out three times a week and Olympic lifting, my body was forced to compensate until it just couldn't anymore when it gave me a pain signal. But neck tightness can also cause a laundry list of other issues. When your neck is really tight, you might get lightheaded and dizzy while working out or exerting yourself because your brain isn't getting enough blood flow. You might get brain fog easily or your eyesight might start to diminish. See, the thing is your brain and eyes need a steady supply of fresh oxygenated blood to self-regenerate and stay young. There are a ton of nerves in the neck, including the brachial plexus, which is why neck tightness can cause nerve impingement and shooting pain down the arms, or cut off blood supply to your arms, leaving them feeling numb and tingly. Or maybe like me in 2012, you've lost the ability to grip, but you still can grip and you do activities that require it, like yoga or weightlifting, so your body compensates, and this is gonna cause everything from elbow pain to wrist pain, shoulder pain, or mid-back pain, depending on your area of vulnerability. A really tight neck can also cause kyphosis or hunchback because those shortened neck tissues are pulling your head forward, causing your mid-back to become overstretched. And I've actually worked with some clients who had plantar fasciitis as a result of this postural pattern, believe it or not. Really tight neck tissue can elevate your ribs, which can cause breathing problems or thoracic rib pain. Honestly, it's a massive list of things that can happen when your neck is really tight. The most important thing to be aware of though, in my opinion, is the impact on our brains as we age. Because if we don't address this neck tightness and underlying root cause, if we allow our neck tissues to become denser and denser, then I believe this could seriously impair brain function because the primary blood channels to the brain are getting blocked. If you wanna solve this for good, which you do, right? <laughs> then you need to figure out why your neck is so tight. If, like me, you discover that your lower abdominals are not activating and your neck is taking over during any activities that require core, strength, and spinal stability, then you must take care of this issue in order to reverse the pattern for good. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in pain management. So yes, release your neck fascia, 
but also find and address that root cause. One quick way to find out if your neck is compensating for those lower abdominals is to do something like slow crunches. You could try boat pose or lie flat on your back with your feet in the air and try to slowly lower your legs to the ground without straining your neck. If your neck bulges out, feels strained, or if your lower back contracts instead of your core to perform this movement, then chances are your neck and or lower back muscles are compensating for lack of deep core activation. If you'd like my step-by-step -step guidance throughout this entire process of figuring out what's going on and solving it for good, then please consider joining me for Solving Pelvic Instability. You'll get immediate access to a library of over 50 fascia release techniques, playlists for specific pain patterns like neck pain, tension headaches, plantar fasciitis, and low back pain. But most importantly, you'll be guided through the process of finding out which of these core muscles, if any, are inhibited and how to take care of the reason they stopped activating and became inhibited. You have to do this before trying to activate them because I don't want you doing what I did for so many years by trying to strengthen your glutes or strengthen your core only to continue compensating and still be in pain. So full transparency here, this is not a quick fix. You will actually have to do some work to resolve this for good. But imagine the confidence you'll feel knowing that you've gotten to know your body like this really well, how it functions and what it needs to function optimally. You're gonna set yourself up to prevent this from ever happening again and prevent future pain from happening, which means you can get back to living with peace of mind. So doors are gonna close soon and I hope to see you inside the course, but if not, no worries, we can still hang out here on YouTube. And of course, I hope you had one or more aha moments during this video. And if you did, I'd love for you to let me know and share that in the comments section below. And remember, if you wanna maintain good brain health for life, you gotta keep your neck tissues as open as possible so your brain gets that steady supply of fresh oxygenated blood and don't neglect those root causes. So thank you so much for nerding out with me today. I'll see you next time.